Hi, in today's lesson we're going to learn how to do part four of the Cambridge First Certificate Reading and Use of English exam. If you haven't seen my videos on how to do part one, two and three, I suggest you check them out first by clicking the link above, now or down below in the comments section. Also remember to subscribe to my channel Oxford English Now for more free English language videos and particularly first certificate preparation by clicking the link down below. Also remember to share and like this video with your friends and colleagues learning English. They'll thank you for it. So let's get started. Part 4 of the Reading and Use of English exam is a keyword transformation task focusing on grammar, vocabulary and collocations. There are six questions and each correct answer receives two points. So this is an important part of the exam. So how do you do Reading and Use of English Part 4? Let's look at some example questions. So each question has three parts to it. The lead-in sentence, here Jenny has no intention of joining the hockey team, a key word in capital letters, here intend, and a second sentence of which only the beginning and end are given. So Jenny blank the hockey team. You have to fill the gap in the second sentence so that the completed sentence is as close as possible in meaning to the first sentence. The gap must be filled with between two and five words, one of which must be the key word. The key word must not be changed in any way. And if you write more than five words, you will not be awarded any marks. When you're counting the words, you should remember to count contracted words as the full form. So didn't would be did not and counts as two words. The only exception to that is can't, which in its full form is cannot. So remember, you must use the keyword in your answer and you mustn't change it in any way. A good tip to check that you have made the second sentence as close in meaning to the first is to cross out the information that is included in the second sentence. Then you can clearly see what is needed in the gap. So here we can cross out Jenny as it's included in the second sentence and also the hockey team. So we need to use intend in the sentence so that it means has no intention of joining. Here the answer is does not or doesn't, both count as two words, intend to join. This is a five word answer, so that's good. And we're using the infinitive form following the verb in intend. Two points are awarded for each correct answer. But if you got half of it right, you would be awarded one point. So if you wrote doesn't intend correct, but made a mistake with the rest of the sentence, you would get one point. And if you got the first bit wrong and wrote to join, you would get one point. Let's look at another example. CDs are much cheaper than they used to be. The given word is nearly. The second sentence is CDs are not blank as they used to be. So let's start by crossing out the information that is already included. We can cross out than they used to be as this means the same as, as they used to be. And we can also cross out CDs. But there are two important clues in the second sentence, the not and the as. Here, because it says not, we know we need a word that means the opposite of cheap, expensive. And as is part of the comparative structure, as plus adjective as when comparing things. So we can add nearly as expensive. Let's do another example together. I really regret eating all that chocolate. The given word is wish. And the second sentence is, I really blank all that chocolate. So let's cross out the information that is already included in the second sentence. So we can cross out I really and all that chocolate. That leaves us with regret eating. This is testing your grammatical knowledge of wish after wish to express a regret in the past, we use the past perfect. So, wish I hadn't eaten. For a more detailed explanation on wish, check out my video with the link above. 
I highly recommend you know the wish structure as it is very common in this part of the exam. Let's look at one last question together. I'm 16 now and I can look after myself, said Holly. Given word care, Holly said she could blank now that she's 16. So let's cross out the information that's already given in the second sentence. So we can cross out I'm 16 now and I can and said Holly. So we have look after myself left. So we are being asked two things. Do we know a phrase or verb to mean look after? And can we change a sentence from direct speech to indirect speech? So the phrase or verb is take care of and the pronoun myself needs to be changed to herself in reported speech. For a more detailed explanation of reported speech, check out the link above now. So as you can see from the example questions, a lot of grammatical structures are tested in this part of the exam. I would recommend that you revise fully whether verbs are followed by the ing, gerund form, or the infinitive, and also revise the verbs that can take either but have a change in meaning, for example, remember. Also revise comparatives, practice changing sentences from direct to direct speech to reported speech, and vice versa, conditionals and past modals, wishes and regrets, and of course, phrasal verbs. Learn the most common ones. I have a list on my website, oxfordenglishnow.com. So here are my tips for the Cambridge First Certificate Reading and Use of English exam, part four. Number one, most importantly, read the original sentence, then the given word and the sentence with the gap. Think about whether you need an expression, for example, to lose your temper, whether you need a phrase or verb, for example, to give up. What kind of grammar you'll need? Are you being asked to use a passive or put something into reported speech? Also try and spell your answers correctly. Look for clues in the second sentence. Pay attention to verbs as it will often indicate whether to use a singular or plural noun in the answer. Look at prepositions or parts of grammatical structures. Only put the missing words in the gap. You should not write the whole or part of the second sentence. You should only put the words that you need in the gap, including the keyword. And then finally, reread both sentences at the end to check that they mean the same. Reading and Use of English Part 4 is testing both your knowledge of lexical structures and grammatical structures showing your ability to express a message in a different way, which shows your ability and flexibility in using the language. Congratulations, you now know how to pass Cambridge First Certificate Reading and Use of English Exam, Part 4. Please remember to like this video if you found it useful, share it with your friends and colleagues learning English, and remember to subscribe to my channel Oxford English Now for more free English language videos out every Friday. Thank you for watching.